Hello, my spooky friends. This is John, your host of Dairyland Frights. And I, I have to apologize. Um, this a- episode with Steve and Victoria from Astral Alight Paranormal. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little glitchy. Uh, again, I apologize for that. But I, I really wanted to release the episode because there's some good stuff in here with Steve and Victoria. So we're going to jump right into the episode right after this message. And again, uh, I apologize for this. And, you know, we'll continue working on things. And like I said, if you go to my Patreon and become Parascani, for only three bucks, I'm able to buy better equipment and make a better podcast and, you know, make it better for everyone. So again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and I will have them back on because I owe it to Steve and Victoria, because they are great people and they have some great stories. Thank you. About when you were in the military, was yes. there ever a time that you saw something or something happened to you that kind of affected you in a paranormal way? I can honestly say not really. And I'm not to say, it's not to say, sorry, we just hit the table. Sorry. It's not to say something never happened, but I don't think I was kind of thinking that way at that time. Like I had wanted to believe that there was life after this life. I really did because in certain lines of business, especially in the military, you you see a lot of things that you don't necessarily want to see. And you want to think that there's a better place. However, not specifically because we only really started to tie everything together in the latter end of my military career. Now, it's not to say stuff never happens that I never would have known to look for, but especially when you're training, sleep deprivation can do some funny things to the brain. (laughs) Uh, So, uh, but I got to say, if I'm being honest, nothing that sticks out. It was more after the fact, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's crazy like that, but... uh, (laughs) It is more of a wanting to believe at that point than it was, okay, like there's there's no denial for me anymore okay. type thing. Yeah. Because I hear a lot of military stories where people mm-hmm. have been on, you know, watches or have been, you know, guard guards, whatever you want to call it, yeah. and have seen strange things oh, happen. Do you have a story maybe you've heard through the pipeline yeah. or military? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, like shadows play a big thing, especially if you're doing, like, say, an observation post at night, things like that, because everything goes bump into night, everything, and <laughs> sound projects for sure. Within my own military career, I guess I could say that especially during those late night trains or something or, and things like that, you do hear a little bit of noise that you can't really explain as well. I think the best, here's the best example I can give you, and it's just coming to my mind and my wife was okay. poking me like, you should remember this. But I remember I was, I was duty sergeant. I was posted to the school as an instructor at our military school, teaching skills to new recruits. I was doing a, I was doing like every now and again, uh, those who are on staff have to do weekend rotations just to make sure everybody's behaving themselves under Friday and Saturday nights and lock up the buildings and such and right. stuff. Always a reward. Um, the buildings that were occupying the school, this is in Kingston, Ontario, in Canada. A lot of those buildings that are still occupied today by military offices uh, date back to World War One. So I remember locking up a building one night and it was about midnight. I want to say it's about midnight if, I, if memory call, recalls correctly. And I'm walking through the building. There's one of those buildings where you're hearing like a hollow click, click. You hear every step, you hear every echo, you hear every everything. And I'm walking down the lock up one entrance and then I'm hearing bump, bump, step, 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 step. Mm. And it's like footsteps coming from Hami. And the only thing that's coming to my head is like, <laughs> I'm trying to lock this up. Whoever's working this late needs to get out <laughs> like now. Like, cause this, I'm, I've got no patience for this anymore type thing. But I would walk to the other end of the building. Okay, who's here, whatever, it's time to go. And then I'd hear the same steps from the other end of the building. Step, 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 click, 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 click. And they were most definitely footsteps. Most definitely footsteps. But at that time, I'm like, whatever, it's an old building. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. whatever, we're locking up and going on. But for kind of having those revelations and, and getting the confirmation in my own belief that that paranormal exists, that spirits and life, life exists after this life, 
I guarantee you I would have handled that differently. <laughs> I would have been doing definitely some call and response, some yes and no. Hey, if there's a spirit here, give me two knocks, two footsteps, whatever. I definitely would have handled it a little bit differently than just yeah. struggling everything off. But that was the probably the biggest thing that I probably should have remembered to tell you. Uh, but it was a long career and I forget a lot of things, so I apologize. <laughs> but that's the thing. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like you remember after the fact, like you'll get off the podcast and you'll be like, dang it. Oh, yeah. And this happens all the time, just kind of like now. And I'm thinking back right now, especially with how I reacted to it, I want to say, <laughs> why did I do it that way? Because I yeah, know yeah. what I know now. Like, I got a whole slew of experiments that I want to do right now. So and they'll never let me back in to do them. Hey, guys, I got this great idea. Exactly, right? And I don't think that would fly well. I want to see you try it, Steve, and then... What's the worst that can happen, right? <laughs> uh, soldiers, you're supposed to be tough anyway. It's all good, right? Okay, let's go. I'm going to fight the paranormal sooner or later. Yeah, exactly. It's going to come. So, yeah. Marcus, get used to it. Yeah, exactly. Victoria, with you, do you remember an experience, like your first paranormal experience Excuse that me. you had? I would say mostly, like, really through Maria. I mean, I can't say that, I guess. I, I'm very intuitive um, with... For like, for, for, do you have something? I'm thinking your mom's perfume. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. My mom's perfume actually, after my mom passed, I all, even to this day, every once in a while, I'm like, I've smelled something. I'm like, that's my mom's perfume. Like, and I have like a lot of, I guess, sensory, like where I can smell familiar scents that I really shouldn't be because they're not here with us. Yeah. That's, that's the big thing. But also I would say. Well, we can get into that later, but even more so more when you're touching certain things. Yes, yes. So this is kind of a new thing, I guess, that kind of developed since we started Paranormal. I, I'm i able to, I find I'm very intuitive to pick up feelings in, in locations. Like we were... <laughs> We were just at a undisclosed location recently, and there was death in the building. And I went in the one room, and I just, like, I felt sick. I felt nauseous. I My head was pounding, spinning. So I find really, like, mine is more of, like, feelings. And, like, I know they're not my feelings, but I'm picking up on spirits, feelings i guess you would say or what they felt in their last days wow that that's really interesting to me because i hear that a lot from paranormal investigators that they feel a dread or heavy or or something so when you go in a room victoria is it something that you really feel like oh, wow this room is heavy or, oh yeah 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 so, absolutely and that feeling is what? Is it maybe death? Is it maybe somebody's watching you? I've had people where I've had the watching where it does feel like people watching me. Mm. A lot of sickness, I would say. And we've gone to a lot of places where people have passed due to sickness. So I, it's almost to a point like I pick up on certain their symptoms and I feel them. Wow. So, so that that can be pretty hard on on the system after a while. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And have you ever told Steve or Maria like, guys, we got to stop? We, I gotta, yes, I gotta get out of here. Yes, I have in a few locations. And can you relate one location? Was it mostly homes, or can you kind of tell my mm -hmm. audience that? One was, so there's this historic site in Prescott, Ontario. It's about 20 minutes, 25 minutes away from us. There was a battle that took place in 1835 um, between the British and the Americans. Um, it's very heavy. We, we do go there frequently, but for a while, I actually had to stop going there. I would not even get out of the car there because of the feeling it was a horrible feeling like it was it was not comfortable i got touched there before which does happen frequently with me for some reason hey. and i just i was just like for a while i was like no i am i'm not going back <laughs> like i have since <laughs> i'll add to that too like that actual battle was actually one of the battles it's, it's obviously post war of 1812 but people did die there and when we were doing invest investigations 
we were getting quite a bit of residual. And what I mean by residual is kind of like loop memories of what would happen at that time. You got it mostly through Estes. Yeah. So like I'll let like I'll shut up and <laughs> let you explain the look of this. <laughs> so yeah, I was using the spirit box and I was getting a lot of like I had a soldier come through saying, I'm shot, I'm hurt, but he mm. but he's telling and then I got this other like a woman's voice come on. And he's telling her, get out, go, run. It was, it was sad. Like it was a lot of emotions, I find. Um, and it, it really does have a heaviness. So yeah. do you ever hear the term paranormal hangover? Have you ever heard that combination? Yeah, not- paranormal hangover is something that there's a few of the groups up here, including ourselves, that say it's kind of like you do an investigation that night or that evening or whatever, and you wake up and it's literally, you feel like it's a hangover. Your energy is gone. Your your mind is kind of like melted, like you just came off a like a like a marathon of reading type thing. It literally feels like a like a like a hangover. And places like that place, I mean, and I don't have the same type of abilities, especially with Victoria, when it comes to intuition and Estes and things like that. But even myself, like I've felt like when you wake up the next morning, you are just exhausted of all energy uh, and and everything feels kind of like you're just drained. And that's one of those places where not the greatest stuff may have happened, where where that happened, where the paranormal yeah. hangar kicked in. It was a half a day trying to get yourself out of it the next day. Yeah, uh, it was it was intense. Yeah. And that's that's amazing to me, because really, with a lot of the stories I hear like paranormal investigators have told me like especially being touched it's yeah. very alarming when the first time it happened and so <laughs> so yeah let's like he has one I feel like it's somewhere. Steve, why'd you tell us about that? Yeah, so like for me, like uh, like in, uh, we uh, investigated this place. It's called Station Theater. It's in Smith Falls, Ontario. And Station Theater, beautiful building. It's kind of like the community hub for theater these days. Uh, amazing people that work there. But it used to be an old rail station, an old rail station. So the thing is, this building, and as a lot of people in the paranormal world know, people can be attracted to locations, but they can also be attracted to items that are placed in these locations. Could be antiques, could be things from other buildings, whatever. Right. So we were doing in, I don't do Estes very often, but I was giving it a go this time because I just don't have an ear for it. But I was in the, go ahead, sorry. I said, that's a little joke that I don't have the ear for it, Estes. Exactly. You know what? It wasn't intended, but I'll take it. It's all good. So I was doing it and sure enough, like uh, I got a voice that said, I'm touching you or I'm behind you. I can't remember what it was, but Sure enough, on the back of my sleeve, I got the tug. And I wasn't expecting that at all. And I was like, I'm done, right? It's the headphones. Shot off like a cannon out of a whatever. But uh, shot off like a cannon. And it was like, that was my first experience. Now, keep in mind, the spirits at this location weren't exactly, they they weren't bad. They were great spirits, like all willing to communicate. Uh, One of our favorite locations. But I was not prepared for that (laughs) whatsoever. No, that's just it, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, even when you say, like, can you touch my hair? Can you touch whatever? Even when it happens, you're like, yeah, you're still semi shocked that it actually happened. Right. So it's, it was, it was, it was interesting. It, it, people around here who, oh, I should say my spooky friends or just people just around, you know, kind of think like, oh, when they watch that show at Ghost Hunters or whatever they watch, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to give them props because they have enough props. Uh, yeah. But no kidding. Whatever show you watch, you right. <laughs> Uh, my main thing is like they make it look like oh, yeah, I, I got touched or oh, this kind of happened like there's no at least I have not seen it, it's kind of like the guy would be like something grabbed my hoodie and they'll be like that was that kind of whatever but you would be I'm jumping in reality <laughs> jumping yeah and sometimes they do where people will say well that's fake Right, there's like a camera guy off, whatever, who knows, grabbing the hood. If it really does happen, what I always tell my spooky friends is like, look, that's big time, right? That's you. It well, it's, you it's like a paranormal it's, boss. I mean, the thing is, too, it takes a spirit a lot of energy to be able to do anything to communicate with you, much less touch. So when you see it on TV and stuff like that, and you're shrugging it off, like like agreement with you, and we all agree here, like that's that's huge. 
that's massive, right? That's nothing you just say, yeah, that's cool, whatever, which is kind of funny too, because we've done a pile of, like we do residentials as well, where people invite us into their houses and things like that. Yeah. And we'll go in there and you can tell, like they're expecting this to be just like TV. We're going to do a four hour investigation and something's going to happen every three minutes. <laughs> and when nothing happens because there's just nothing there or nothing wants to communicate or, or whatever, they're like, well, what's this all about? Because like, it's, it's, it's whatever, but it's, it's yeah. not TV, right? Like, yeah. even if that's legitimate or not, like they might do 120 investigations, Aaron, three of them. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and yeah. even then, like, I mean, like the, the show you just mentioned there, like they're investigating those places for like a week, not four <laughs> hours. And you're yeah. seeing 45 minutes. Right? <laughs> right. So it's, it's, it's a reality versus TV land type, <laughs> type of thing. Right. It's it's absolutely because again you know you could be at a place for four or five hours and nothing. I mean, it's just nothing. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like we've gone to plenty of investigations where we've gotten literally nothing. They're like, I don't understand. I heard this bang, but okay, maybe it was your cat, maybe it was whatever. <laughs> but here's the thing, and this is the way our belief system works. If they don't want to communicate with you. They're not going to communicate you, like, no pun intended, but if they want to ghost you, they can, right? Like, it's no different, <laughs> right? If you see a 1-800 number come up on your phone or you, and it says unknown, but 1-800, you're going to answer? Oh. Spam call? Right? Yeah. Right. And I just think that's really interesting. People get a whole thing. So let's talk about, before we get into some of your uh, investigations that you guys can talk about, is what typically equipment do you use when you go to a place? Is there a go-to? Because I, I know a lot of people, uh, I've had paranormal investigators on who have said, I'll use my iPhone to take pictures or whatever phone you mm -hmm. have, or I'll use, you know, a REM pad, which you guys, if you guys use that, can I explain it? Trip wires, which is basically like a little web they kind of just put together. Still explain that to me. And cameras, obviously. So what equipment do you guys use? And old spirit boxes, too. We kind of each have our own things we use, I would say. Maria, she is, being the youngest, she's actually the most old school. Okay. She um, uses dowsing rods a lot. Dowsing rods, sure. Yeah, she uses those a lot. And, like, she will use, like, a K2 which is EMF detector. But so yeah, she's kind of more old school. I'm more of a spirit box is my main thing that I use that they can communicate with me at balls. Those little blinking balls, yeah. <laughs> little, you know, they're the cheapest, but the most effective. Yeah. But how about you, Steve? Yeah, honestly, I, I'm, I love motion detection. So like the cat balls, like Vicky said, it's, it's like four for 14 bucks Canadian. Like you can't go wrong with that. Right. <laughs> that type of things like the ramp pod for sure uh, as well. Like we do have a trip wire that is kind of like, it's kind of like a big cord, which is hooked into a REM pod. Basically uh, we use it. I, I, I don't find we get much out of it, to be honest with you, to be quite honest, we get more out of the actual REM pod itself. We take a lot of pictures, like a lot of pictures. Like, I mean, if we're doing a four hour investigation, we might take anywhere between 150 to 200 pictures a night, uh, just on the off chance that we might catch something. But I'm also a big guy for column response, especially for uh, EVP, for trying to catch that background voice and, and things like that. So, and, and Maria is also add that to, mm -hmm. to the same. Uh, we'll go through the video and the voice recordings and everything we record, like, non-stop over and over and over like boosting the game boosting the, the, the db everything with the decibels to see if we can get anything uh because i'm a big believer of using your own intuition first your own your human your human uh senses to try to pick up so even initially just to go into a room and just sit back and just just listen just listen and see what happens do a little bit of column response hey if there's any spirits here would you mind giving me a knock or, or whatever but I will add, and this is a little bit off base, but not too far off base. Before, before and after an investigation, we always do a little thing with the spirits. So when we start an investigation, we say hi. Like we kind of introduce ourselves, like we're introducing ourselves to your new neighbor, right? Hi, I'm Steve. This is Victoria. This is Maria. We come here with respect to learn your story and your history and, and something along those lines. Anyway, just to kind of 
break the ice, especially if they haven't seen, like, cause we've done plenty of uh, locations which haven't been investigated before. So we want to kind of try to break the ice to begin with. And even when it's ended, when we're done at the end of the night, we always say, thank you for communicating with us. Uh, we hope uh, that you'll allow us to come communicate uh, with us again. But we want to be respectful. That's the big thing, regardless of the type of experiment that we're doing. Sorry, I went a little bit off there, but it's kind of important in our process because we do stuff for the sake of getting a reaction. We want to be respectful for those who came before us because it's important that to know that sometimes they want somebody to hear their story, if that makes yeah. sense. And I, and I love that because that is typical of what I hear from all paranormal investigators yeah. I have. Uh, interview one of the biggest things is that respect right because these these spirits were people at one time right yeah. and it like if someone would just barge in like if you're just sitting and watching tv with the family and someone barges into your house and be like <laughs> hey see you, victoria maria don't mind me i'm just gonna start looking around your stuff and uh yeah. whatever you'd be like whoa whoa right exactly exactly right and that's just it you'd be respectful and the big thing is too like don't let you say you're welcome if you find the communication yeah. starting to slow down don't keep forcing the, forcing the issue Right. Don't sit there and say, Hey, what's your favorite dinosaur? Like, or just, <laughs> just, just stuff like that. <laughs> don't antagonize. Cause I, yeah. Like, certain other, well, they'll be like, Hey, you want to scare me? Scare me. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's going. Yeah. <laughs> don't provoke. Right. Like, if, trust me, like, if you're, if you get touched, that's all the pop you're going to need. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. This is this. Right? Yes. So use the gray matter between your ears, be respectful. Yeah. Right. And it's just common sense, you know. I don't know. I just think yeah. that's really interesting. But one of the things I want to talk about now is you talk about investigations. And I don't know if you guys want to do it separately. Like, what's your favorite? So, Victoria, you want to say your favorite and then Steve, you know, your favorite. Sure. My favorite is probably, there's so many favorites. I would probably have to go with the jail. <laughs> myself <laughs> yes okay um we've sdg jail in cornwall ontario we've done that a few times as started out as public investigations uh, it is one of my favorites i i don't know why i have i feel connected somehow to it but i feel like i always want to go back to it and we have gotten good activity um there is two resident spirits there that do communicate a lot um from the 50s um but yeah i would say that's my favorite and um like i said usually i get them in the spirit box so i hear their voices so that's my big thing is that i want to hear their voices yeah so let's talk about your experiences like talk about you know the voices you've heard and all the things you've taken away from there yeah so we were we were doing a spirit box session and we were trying to get in contact with the spirit henry he was one of the prisoners there in the 50s and i was just like I, we always do you need is there anything we can do for you can we help you in any way and then it was just nothing like he just said nothing like there's nothing you can do type thing to help me and i'm just like like I get, I guess, emotionally attached to spirits too, regardless of who they are. And I kind of get that protectiveness. So I, you know, I, I want to help them. And yeah. we've, we've had motion detection, but um, yeah, like it, that's my goal really is I want to help them. And, but it was like, it was like nothing I could do. So it kind of like, you know, heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. So talk about that. Do you feel a connection in the sense of like, some of these prisoners were maybe put in there wrongly convicted, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's happened. Do you ever get that feel? Do you ever get to that degree where you're like, wow, maybe there's something else going on here? I do. I, I, I talk about it all the time. Yeah, that prison has a very, has a pretty dark history with uh, who they used to put in. Like, I'm not sure if you want to. Yeah, you, okay. So that history, or that prison was built in 1833 originally and it ran until 2002 hmm. but it wasn't just prisoners that it was prisoners yeah for sure people did do bad things there but obviously prisoner care for prisoners then obviously wasn't as good as probably what they're getting now in certain places however 
it's not just men that went there. Women were also sent there too. They also used to send orphans and children there who were undesirables. There, there is a lot of history there. And they're saying, they're, they even say that just even the grounds, like under the grounds there, there's people buried. Right. So, cause they do have a gallows there as well that they, they did execute people. Um, so like the, like it, it wasn't exactly humane circumstances, but the thing that kills me is honestly the children. Yeah. There is kids there. There is, there is kids there for sure. Uh, that, uh, you have picked, shouldn't be there. You have picked up like any EVPs or what? we did get a young girl in the courtroom through the spirit box. And she was telling us her name was Charlotte. She was just a young girl. I'm not sure what her situation was there. We didn't get much more out of her. She did kind of play with some of the motion detection, but that's the, it's, it's, I think it takes so long to get like a full story that you're just like, I want to go back. I need more. I, you know, like. That's just it. Anybody who says they do an investigation and they come out of the investigation and they can give you a bio of that person. Uh, I don't know about that. Unless you're doing your homework before or after the fact or, or whatever. Usually, at least the investigations in our experience, we do. It'll never, you'll never, you're getting pieces here and there, especially if you're lucky enough to catch the same spirits over and over and over, right? I know for me, like the first time I went there and it's, it's one of, it's your favorite place. It's not so much my favorite place. So, and why is that? Why? Oh, I'll tell you exactly why. We were, we were in general population and we weren't getting much on that part of the session. It's like, all right, it's starting to die down. Maybe it's because of the time of day. And it was a public investigation that when we did. So there was other groups there through things like that. And after a while, spirits just get tired of seeing people. It is what it is. So we were going down going down the stairs within general population and I got a massive stabbing pain in my back, like on my kidneys. And I've never experienced anything like that before. I uh, haven't experienced anything like that since, but it's kind of like, they got nothing to say, like, whatever, it's time for us to leave because they clearly don't want to talk to us. And then sure enough, I got it right in the back and it, it, almost like somebody shanked me or something like that. Like, it was really, it, it hurt like hell. <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, so like there was no mark or anything left there, but like it, it's it was the reason why that sticks out to me is because I've never really felt anything like that before, especially in that part of my body and that part of my back, uh, because it wasn't like my lower middle back where you can pinch your sciatic or or something like that, but it was kind of like it was a stabbing pain. It hurt like hell, but when I left, it was gone. Like it, it was just gone, right? So that very strange, but uh, again with the with the children and how they were treated there. Like, like if your parents couldn't afford to keep you or just didn't want you, here you go, prison, take, take care of my kids. We don't want them. Right. And it's like, oh boy, that, that bugs me. And a as lot. a mom, I mean, especially you're like, you know, you have that maternal, you want to take yeah. care of them. Yeah. So let's talk about for a second. That's, that's one of my questions for you. Well, you both, but mainly Victoria, mm -hmm. since you're a mom and their children, do you ever feel a spirit attached to you and you brought it home? Because uh, the reason I say that is because a lot of my family investigation teams, paranormal mm -hmm. teams, you know, they're a mom or a yeah. dad. Yeah. Right? And they, they go into a place like that where they've been abandoned or children or, or whatever, orphan children, whatever you would say. And they have that feeling where the spirit sees, oh, Look at that lady. She looks nice. She looks like a mom. Have you ever had that happen? Not, I don't, I'm not sure if it's children. I definitely know we brought stuff home. I'm positive of it. But you do in certain places where you know they're kids. It's almost like you can feel them like coming close to you, sitting on your lap. You know, like you can kind of, that sense, I guess you get cold and the kind of that tingly. So I have had that. I don't know if any of the kids come home with me. I'm positive we have brought spirits home regardless of what age they are. I'm sure that's definitely happened. Faye from Station Theater. Um, there is a home. little girl at an investigation we do frequently, a couple times a year. And she will come up and sit on your lap. She's a little seven-year-old girl. Her name's Faye at Station Theater. Um, 
through multiple investigations we've done, we've we've asked her, what can we get for you? So she's like, it came on the spirit box, a doll. So we did take her a doll. They do keep it there for her. That is phased doll. Nobody can touch it. But she does come up to you. She's very, she's used to us and all the people that do work there. Everybody's familiar with her. She comes up, she will sit on you, sit on your lap. <laughs> wow. Feel like a child sitting on Yeah, you. and your mom did. We took your, we took his mom on an investigation. <laughs> Dragged her in there. Yeah. You want to do that you're coming with us. <laughs> and she, she experienced the same thing with Faye. Yeah, she did. And my mom, I would say, even though she would never admit it, she's a complete skeptic. Well, she wasn't after that one. Okay to be, okay to be skeptical. This, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. But she, when we did that investigation, she walked away and she still talks about it. And the one she was with us on was like November of last year. Mm -hmm. And she's still talking about it. So now it's like every weekend, did you do another one? Did you do another one? Did you do another one? <laughs> now she's asking about it all the time, right? But she definitely noticed Faye's presence there uh, because she is very, you know, Faye... Uh, kind of latches on uh, to the moms and their grandmothers and, and things mm -hmm. like that, because that's her comfort zone and good for her. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Steve, you said you don't really like the jail going to, why did we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think that was it. I mean, for me, it was the, that stabbing moment. I like a lot of what we get there is Estes and I'm not the greatest with Estes, but that jail itself, like, and I don't get a lot of heavy feelings, but that's heavy the minute you're walking through the door, like in, in through the, uh, the courtroom, because the courtroom is actually attached to the jail where they used to pr bring the prisoners up from the jail into the courtroom. And you can sense it as soon as you walk in or it's very dark. It's very heavy. And it's, it's one of those things where, you know, somebody's over your shoulder. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Or somebody standing behind you. But the thing is, there's a lot of cases where we can't say that we don't can't, don't know what it is. We don't know if it's a child. We don't know if it's a guard. We don't know if it's a prisoner. Uh, the two men, you probably be able to give a little bit more information on this. The two men that were executed there, Sagan, Henry Sagan. And, and Peter Balcombe. Yeah. There are the two big spirits there that do, they will communicate with you. They will talk with you. They will... I'm sure people have gotten touched there, uh, experienced weird, like a weird feeling in the one of the jail cells. I was sitting up on the bed. I don't know if it was them, but like my leg just started heating up. Like it was like burning. There was no mark, but it was burning. I had to get up and leave. I'm like, this is like, what is this? Like, it was weird. I went back after, but it was like someone kind of just right up beside you, but it was hot. Yeah. And let me ask you this, Victoria, and I and I say this in all due respect, is that women weren't treated very well in jails. Exactly. Like the, the people who go to jail may have not been the best boyfriend or husband. No, they have you not. So when you go in, you're a marked target. Like you yes. feel like okay, here it comes. And yeah. you've handled that very well. But has there been a time you just mentioned the burning thing? Has there been any other time where Yank on the hair, you get an EVP message saying like die or or something like that. More I've gotten you get you get hug, you get them saying kiss. Uh oh, sure. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah, it can be <laughs> it can be weird. I just I'm more of like, okay, if you can say whatever you want to me, not to my daughter. She's off living. So that that's my follow-up question is I've heard so my female uh, paranormal investigators, I don't mean to pick on you, Victoria, have had, well, let's just say the ghosts are a little handsy. And the husbands have had to kind of step in and say, oh, whoa, whoa, that's my wife. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Happen like that. Yes, it was. We did have that, but it was on a different investigation. Okay. So Sam? Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sam, so... We do this, uh, it's, a, it's a, a private property that we do this investigation on in a town not too far away. And the spirits there, it's a grandfather, a mom, and a son. And the son is super touchy-feely. <laughs> super touchy-feely. Like, when you go in there, he's basically saying, all the men get out, all the women stay type thing. <laughs> and he, he was getting a little bit too touchy one time. I was like, all right, Sam, like back <laughs> off my wife just a little bit and don't even look at my daughter. It's like... Just a young fella 
full of mischief or whatever. Nothing like it would be a prisoner. It's all like not to say it's 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 never appropriate to touch a person <laughs> unless to give consent, obviously. But this a kid who is a product of his time will just say okay. that. But I, I did have to say, okay, buddy, like actually, away you go. I right? did get on the spirit box. Hey, ladies. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Now, Steve, that's having Victoria. Come on, the yeah. And sometimes get touched too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's for me. Like, I mean, I got stabs. I like honestly, other than that stabbing pain I got in film wall and the touch on my arm at Station Theater. I haven't had a ton. Like, I've had, like, the hair stand up on the back of my neck and things like that. But it could be, like, the spotty sense tingling or, or whatever of, of you kind of sensing a presence behind you. Uh, but nothing in terms of, like, my leg or arm getting hot or cold or anything like that. Like, I, I almost want to experience that just to kind of see how it feels to, to experience what Victoria feels. And Maria, because Maria gets this a lot as well. But I haven't had that opportunity up until this, up to this point anyway. Yeah. There's always tomorrow because we're doing these all the time. So. <laughs> yeah, and I want to know, Steve, in Victoria, you reach out to me if that ever happens, if he gets his butt touched. Like, I will, well, I will let you know. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, gear down, gear down, yeah. Hey, Steve, tell me about your, uh, one of your paranormal places you've gone to that you've liked. We touched a lot on Station Theater, and that one is a good one. The reason being is because of Faye. That's, that's a wonderful one. But there is a couple of interesting things that happened there, because that was an old train station. Um, and the tra- But the train tracks still run through there. The trains are still constantly going through there. They just don't necessarily stop at that location anymore. Okay. So another thing that we have to keep in mind about this location, it's now a theater where people act and put on shows and music and things like that. All of the seating there, from our understanding, comes from the National Art Center out of Ottawa. So all the seating, a lot of the props, the costumes, things like that, come from all over the place. All other theaters, National Art Center, whatever. So with that being said, we were doing, I believe it was another Estes, and we were doing our questions. Maria and I were doing our questions. And all we, all of a sudden, we heard, there's a, like, there's a, and we heard nothing as like just a train company. Okay, that must be, that's very random or whatever. Like, fine, whatever. A minute and a half later, here comes the train, right? <laughs> it's like, wow, that's that's pretty good. Like maybe it's just a coincidence or whatever. So we're in the front lobby then, which is where you used to buy the tickets. Mm-hmm. So later on that investigation, we were in the green room where all the actors and everything prepare for their shows. Yeah. And we, we come across a spirit named Caroline. Caroline was an entertainer to what extent we don't know of singer, actor, or whatever. And we say, we ask Caroline how she got there. And Caroline says, oh, I just got here by the train. And I was like, you mean the train that just came through right, there, right? right? right. But, but that just sent everything off. Like, okay, like spirits are attached to buildings, but are spirits like actually taking the train <laughs> from these locations? Because it was very ironic, right? Yeah. But well, so that was really, really a good one. But also another one in that same location was I can't remember the spirit's name, the purple dress. But I can't remember her name, and I feel ashamed that I can't remember. But she was saying she wore a, she was wearing a purple dress, and we were up in the wardrobe, and it's like, okay, where's the purple dress? Her favorite's the purple dress. But we started taking pictures over and over. And one of the pictures when we reviewed on, when we went through our view, was like a purple orb. Like and a whoosh, like a whoosh, like it was like a big orb of purple. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's this 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 woman in her purple dress, right? So that one was a really really. So that location is, is by far one of our favorites. But I say the other one that I would have to say is Old Town Hall, and that's in Delta, Ontario. So that place has been a little bit of everything over time. It was it's a town hall now, kind of like a, a gathering place, like a meeting center, I guess you want to call it. Like, but before, like I think it was the it was where all the soldiers gathered together in World War One before they marched off the war. There was also a huge typhoid epidemic back at the turn of the nineteenth century as well. There was the spirits are really, really active there, but there was also one spirit that kept trying to drive us to the prison, which was downstairs. Which we couldn't get Which to. Which we couldn't get to. <laughs> and we kept, this. the spirit kept coming to us and say, go to the jail, go to the jail. <laughs> kind of draw us down to the jail. And we really wanted to go down to that jail, but it was all, it's all 
boarded it off and everything like that. Like, we're going to ask him again next time. But it was kind of like, it, it was a creepy yeah. type of thing. But something definitely worth exploring. Okay, why is this spirit want us to go down to this jail does he want us to tell us the story or is there something else here <laughs> so that was a really really good one as well like i could think of a hundred of these things mm -hmm. and and we'd be talking here for three hours <laughs> um, i would love to do that but i would love to have you back on because of that <laughs> we, we talk about that um one of the things too i like to do a quick fire questions and you guys just tell me seen it not seen it so I always like to ask my paranormal investigators because there's a number of different things you can see on an investigation. So mm -hmm. let's start with the first one, which you just answered, was orbs. So you've seen orbs on your investigations, but yeah. here's my thing. And a lot of paranormal investigators, as well as people in uh, area, have said that orbs can be misconstrued, let's say. Like... It could be dust. It can be yeah. lint. It could be. It could be. So, what do you what do you guys think of that? When you get an orb, do you guys and you guys sound like skeptics? Like, oh yeah, what I've had on the show. <laughs> what do you do when you get that? Do you guys kind of go, eh, eh, I don't know. Most times, we just discount it as dust. Yeah. Um. Or flash. Exactly. Or a flash or a light or something like that. So yeah. very few were really like, yeah, mm -hmm. that could be something. Kind of like I'd say the purple dress that would like the whoosh that would probably be. Yeah, it was like a big purple. But most like, times, yeah, we're just kind of. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I would say about ninety five percent of them we just instantly discount because I mean it's kind of like. Truth be told, unless a spirit's going to stand in front of you and say, hey, I'm a ghost. I mean, it's really hard to confirm or deny. So unless it's something we can positively confirm, we kind of debunk it right off the bat because we can't prove it one way or the other. The purple one, though, for sure. Like, we haven't come across a lot of purple orbs before. And it was just ironic when we were taking these pictures, we were at, we did, the spirit was telling us about this purple dress, yeah. right? Well, go ahead. No, I'm good. <laughs> okay, I was just gonna say, how about a wisp? And a wisp is kind of like, um, I don't know if you guys smoke or have been around people smoking, you know, when they smoke and then, then they kind of the smoke kind of. Have you ever seen something like that on an investigation where it seems like there's this kind of just mist kind of going across things? I have. It actually wasn't on investigation, it was at our <laughs> old house. It really creeped me out. We weren't doing this at the time. We lived on the base, uh, military base in Ottawa. And I remember taking Maria or taking her to school, coming back home. So it was daylight. And, but I remember it happened all the time. As soon as I walked in the front door of the hallway, it was like a fog. And then it just goes away. There would be no explanation for it. Yeah. It really creeped me out at the time. But yeah, I would say that that's a huge one for and that's, me. And that's not imagery. That's real time. That's, oh yeah, that's me yeah. seeing it. That's seeing it as you're walking through the door. Did, did it happen at like, it's eight o'clock in the morning. Here comes the whisk. Was it something like that or just, in you know, whenever it happened? It was, I would say random times throughout the day. It happened a lot kind of when I was home by myself. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but. Yep, yeah, I would say it did happen frequently. I don't know if you ever seen it, but it always seemed to when I was there. Uh, once, uh, actually, and it sticks like a sore thumb because I didn't know, like, being young at the time, I wouldn't know anyway. But I mean, like, oh my gosh, is this a gas leak? Is this what's going on here? Right. Right. So, like, I remember coming out, and like, for me at that time in the military, like, I was doing a lot of strange shifts. It was not long post 9-11, uh, that type of area where we were ramping up security. And I remember coming out of uh, the bedroom to get ready to either start a shift or do something else or, or whatever. And it was kind of like a fog yeah. through the floor. And it's like, okay, what's going on? Like, I don't, I don't smell anything. This is a gas leak or, or, or whatever. But like, it was, it was very weird. Like, I mean, and I had, I wasn't wearing glasses at that time. I had a pretty darn good vision. And it's like, it's, it, it, I'm always having to strain to see the wall. It was, it was very, very, very dense and like a white fog yes. type thing. And it's, it's very weird. Like, I mean, we weren't into any type of thing paranormal at that time. We're talking like Maria's 21 now. She was probably two or three years old at that time. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was a long time ago. Like in, in terms of imagery, I would say the windmill, we, we took some pictures where it was, it was kind of 
strange where the background had a little bit of a, a white mist yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't necessarily orbs, but more of a mist across the bottom. And, and this is like not after dark, not complete daylight, kind of like in that middle. Yeah. But so it could have been a reflection off the sun or whatever going down, whatever. But the big yeah. thing that sticks out the most is probably like you're saying at that house in yeah. Ottawa at that time was probably the big wow. one. Okay, so the next one, Shadows. Have you seen you, Shadows? You're more so. I have it so much myself. You yeah. Uh, you in this house. In this house, I have in the past, not so much anymore. We're in our master bedroom there. Like, I would frequently see shadows going from one corner to the other. And I tried to debunk it, saying, okay, it's just a reflection of car lights and everything going by the house. But we live on, like, a cul-de-sac. There's not a lot of traffic that's coming up and down that street, sure. but it would literally be shadows from the top left corner going to their top right or, or whatever going across. And it's like okay. while we're laying in bed at night, all the lights are off. Like it's a very, this town does a lot of like light discipline, we'll call it. We don't have street lights. Street lights to get those reflections off. So it's, it's kind of odd to see those shadows uh, because basically the only time I could pick them up as if there's a bit of moonlight or stars in the sky or whatever, sort of some kind of light coming in through the window. But enough to kind of make you pop up a little bit, like, what is that? And there, there is a couple times where I turned on the light to say, okay, what, it, what what's going on there? And nothing, but then you're just laying awake for a couple hours, just looking from one corner to the other to see what you can see. But definitely uh, not a stranger for me for seeing shadows. But again, like we were talking about my military pass before even late at night or whatever and you're on some kind of sentry post or whatever you're looking through the woods you're constantly seeing shadows constantly but that could be a combination of sleeper deprivation like light when it comes to going off the trees things like that it could be anything but the one that sticks out the most excuse me will be the shadows from our bedroom although i haven't seen them in quite some time mm. well that's good right yeah yeah <laughs> It's not a bad thing. The last one, the biggest one that every paranormal investigator wants to get is the full apparition. Have you ever caught the full apparition? Yes, and it was actually like a couple weeks ago. Nice. All right. Um, never, never have up to this point. So we were Merrickville Ruins. So it's an old mill back from the Saints and there's a fire and there's just basically some pieces of buildings left. It's all stone. We were there, I would say it was it was not really late, but it was still past dusk. And it's a creepy vibe to begin with. And I'm sitting here just looking around. You were taking some pictures, I think, and then all of a sudden I'm we're at me and Maria were standing beside each other at the corner of the building, seeing like a an apparition, a white apparition go had to be probably maybe 10, 20 feet in front of me, walk towards this path. Well, I got creeped out. I'm grabbing Maria because yeah. <laughs> I've never seen it before, so it really caught me off guard. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and did you notice the shape? A man, woman? A man. Yeah, definitely a man. Period um, clothes too. Right? Period clothes, I would say. It looked like had like like a hat on. But yeah, that's the the one and only time. And it literally like it kind of just like getting touched. It really catches you off guard because you're, you're not expecting that. Because I mean, the odds of that happening, I mean, really... It, it yeah. doesn't happen often, so... No, no. And that's why I always call it the big one. Because it is, yeah. It's You catch that, and it's almost like... It, it's kind of weird feelings, right? You're excited, but then you're also like, whoa! <laughs> that's, yeah. What is no, that? Right? Absolutely. You know, normal hangover, so... Yeah, because Maria's like, what? Because I'm literally latching on. <laughs> right? And that, to me, is... And it takes, again, uh, so much energy. People don't understand so much energy that has to be, I don't know, sucked from a different source or brought in from it to yeah. even get to that. So that's why, you know, obviously, you know, you go in and I <laughs> think this time it's probably happened to you too, where you're doing spirit box, Estes, whatever, and those brand new batteries that you put in just a minute before <laughs> are now dead and you're like yes. how's whoa that, that happens 
so often i can't even begin to tell you like we'll have three hour batteries in your camera and they're gone in 30 minutes and it's like you're constantly charging running charging running charging running charging mm -hmm. and the same thing like uh with the spirit box mm -hmm. like we had a full charge in these things and spirit box if you're charging especially the sb7 spirit box 7 the charge on those things lasts quite a long time if you're not using it consistently for hours at a time and we had just finished charging. I don't think we got an hour into the investigation and we were using that thing like five minutes here, 10 minutes there type thing. It shouldn't have drained like that. They would just go. Right. But the camera batteries is probably the most yeah. noticeable one yeah. where we honestly can't keep them charged quick enough. Yeah. Yeah. So that to me is like, wow, you know, you guys should get stock and like, you know, I know. Oh, I know. Right. <laughs> Come on, guys, throw some batteries in. So before we wrap up, you say you do home investigations or, and I'm guessing you're trying to help people. So tell me about that. So, you know, someone, cause we do have listeners in Canada. I do have mm -hmm. uh, listeners in Alberta, Ottawa. So tell me about like what, Somebody reaches out to you and says, Steve, Victoria, I believe I have a spirit. Or what do you guys do next? Tell me your process. Yeah, so we usually will kind of, can you give us your experience? We get them to just kind of like, okay, give some experience so we kind of know what's going on. Okay, is it like troublemaker spirit? Is it like, you know, loved one, whatever the case may be. <laughs> and then we we go investigate we ask them if they want to join in generally for those type we say you know it's probably best for just the people that live in the house like you know don't bring over you know 10 visitors it's not going to work right. <laughs> and we do the same thing we do for all our investigations we you know they're all done on video um but the only thing with residential that we do and we ask them to take part ask questions you know try and figure out you know, their aunt, what they, you know, what they're looking for. And then, but with the residential, we forward all that information to them. It's never released to the public. That is their personal home. If they want to release it, that's up to them. But we look at it as it's our, like we investigated, but it's their material. Yeah. 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 We, sorry, I was going to say, like, we don't, like uh, some people, like, uh, I'm not sure what other groups do around here, but we don't charge for any of this stuff like we don't like people say okay how much do we owe you stuff like nothing uh this is a labor of love for us uh some people golf we do this right <laughs> so i mean it's it's one of those things where if if people are inviting us into their homes they'll get that respect we'll do everything we can for them we yeah. give them all the material uh, like vicky was saying to them to after we give them their material we delete it on our end like that's that's their home that's their business yeah they do what they see fit and we're just happy to be a part of it. That's very sweet of you guys, you know, and, and most of my paranormal investigators do it too. But one thing I have to ask, cause this has come up from time to time is you might go into <laughs> someone's home and they just have some type of mental challenge or something. What do you guys do for that? Well, you guys are, it's pretty obvious that there's something going on with them, which is sad. What do you guys do for that? You can take this. So, honestly, we haven't really come across that problem as of yet. The only thing that I think we would do is just basically, it's a case-by-case -case situation, right? Because we don't know how they're going to react. We would just kind of just kind of reassure them that we're, we're there because they asked us to, to be there. And again, like everything we have, you can have. And if uh, they become uncomfortable, then it's, you know, we, we, shut we, it down. We, uh, we cut it, right? Like if, if it's, especially if it's making them uncomfortable, because we have had cases where people just want to debunk it and move on. And the minute they, that they, that we come up with something, oh my God, or, there is a spirit or, or whatever. We, if they're not comfortable with it, like that's, that's no problem. We're, we're, we're going to end this right now. But it's, it's kind of like just to reassure them that, it, that it's all good. Like, I mean, it's their home. The spirits who are there know it's their home. It's it's just be respectful, I guess, is the best thing you can do. Because yeah. if there is challenges or, or whatever, it's out of their control more times than it's not. So the only thing you can do is be respectful and be supportive in any way you can. That's that's awesome. 
So again, I'd love to have you guys back on because, like you said, Steve, we could talk about this for hours, and I'm sure you have oh, yeah. stories and everything yeah. like that. Oh, for sure. So why don't you tell my spooky friends out there what you guys coming up? Do you have any events or anything you guys are doing investigation? So we do a lot of residentials, uh, but we also do a lot of historic sites and museums as yes. well. Uh, like we have one coming up in Westport Museum. We have an, in Westport, Ontario. We have another one coming up in Middleville District Museum. That's in Middleville, Ontario. We have, oh my gosh, help me here. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Outside of residentials, um, we also have one coming up in the fall at Osgood Regional Museum in Osgood, Ontario or Vernon, Ontario, that's actually located. And we have a pile of residentials in the middle. We actually just finished one at a air, is it an Airbnb? An Airbnb earlier in a week, but that's a private one. We're not sure if that's going to be invested, released or not yet. That's up to the, to the place's owner. What else am I missing? No, I, I think that's, we're doing, yeah, we, we do a lot of museums and stuff too. So that's where a lot of our, come in in historic sites we do a lot of like uh war of 1812 sites so in the they're kind of ones we just kind of do when we just got nothing else going on <laughs> yeah exactly and we're typically busy i mean last summer uh we went from may to like the end of october every weekend had something that we were Ooh. doing whether it's residential or historic site or, or something else and I think it's it's lining up to be more of the same coming up. Like people are, are reaching out a little bit more frequently now because we have a little bit more um, experience, and like especially with the museums, because the museums all talk to each other. Yes. So <laughs> like like one will refer us to another, and then we'll go from there. Um, and I mean, like we are, we actually have done a couple presentations as well. There's yes. a couple historical societies that have invited us. So we did uh, some presentations on our experiences and discussions and things like that there next time we'll talk about that one <laughs> yeah just things like that like we're always available for for anything it's just a matter of agreeing on a uh, on a on a time and a place yeah sure and again thank you so much for going over time with me because uh, like i said we talked for hours i'll definitely have you guys back on because i'm sure you like we said we have a whole bunch of other good stuff to talk about and uh like, when this episode comes out like everyone can see your uh, links and everything so Again, some of my Canadian friends, spooky friends, if they want to reach out to Steve and Victoria, I'm sure they would love to hear from you. So we end every show, Steve and Victoria, by saying two things. One, we say hi to your ghost. Hello, ghost. Howdy. <laughs> and then we say stay spooky. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, John. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.